All right, this battery and the heat of summer is sometimes dying on us because us just having a hard time keeping up with this fridge and the heat. So what I've started doing is just when I'm not running the generator or the air conditioner, I'm just leaving it plugged into the 110 outlet that's plugged in right here. This is what the old fridge was plugged into. Um, and then when I'm running the generator or we're on the road or we're doing anything, I can plug this in and we and our fridge stays perfectly cold and this battery just charges up and I don't have any problems with it. Eventually down the line, you can see how small, this is my charge cable coming from the coach. Uh, and if I wanted to run another one, I'd have to try and find a way to get a bigger cable in here. But right now, this is working for us. Um, in the future, you know, if, if we end up doing more boondocking in the future and this battery starts dying more, um, I might try and like I said, find a way to get more um, power here than just this little wire. Because this wire right here is probably only getting like six amps. And this fridge um, full clip is probably pulling about 12 to 16 amps. Now that I'm finished with the roof, you're asking me, why am I not taking a day off? The answer is, because I'm tired of having to back around this pole every time I got to get in and out of here. So, today, usually I can one-shot this to see how close we get. Wow. Let me get pretty close here. It's pole. So today, digging it up. <sighs> I should probably bring a tripod out here so you guys can watch me work. I'll uh, update you as this thing is more ready to come out. We are Audrey, Stephen, and Bella, our charismatic Doberman. We're living full time in a vintage Winnebago we named Artemis. It's been eight months of nonstop adventure and we haven't even begun to travel. We've tackled many repairs, many updates, many projects, and many challenges. Steven just sold his car, and we paid off our debt on the RV. Stay tuned as we finally wrap up the huge roof project, attempt more DIY, and continue to downsize my business. As we continue working towards the goal of avoiding another Minnesota winter, we'll continue to document the journey. The last thing I want is the RV falling into that. So today, I'm gonna try and get this thing that's been sitting in the garage for like a year and a half running uh, so that I can get it sold. This right here is a 1999 Land Cruiser and it's gonna be my daily driver for a couple of weeks. So it's got nice big snow tires on it. I just aired up. But it hasn't been started. They never kept a battery tender on it. Um, so I just popped the caps of these ba the battery in it. They weren't empty or anything, but I just topped them off a little bit. Um, we're going to see if I can breathe any life back into this battery. 
I had it charging for like 10 minutes on a two amp charge. This is my handy dandy voltmeter. Let's see. 988, so it's actually pretty good. Not bad, hopeful. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 10 amps on this battery for like an hour and see what happens. Cause the toolbox open today. Pile's getting bigger again. <laughs> um, I bought a hose at Home Depot and immediately cut it and ruined it. But here's why. I took some Teflon tape, let's see that right there. That's for propane, but uh, I figured it would work here. So I had a, a steady little drip coming from this fill hose in my water bay here. And uh, you can see I got a couple of moisture containers down here trying to control the moisture. But anyway, I could never get control of the moisture in this bay and it was really frustrating me. And so I'm, I'm kind of hoping that uh, by installing this, um, which basically stopped all the moisture from dripping out of the bottom of this hose. You see, my finger's nice and dry now. Um, and I put it uh, right there. So it's draining right out of the bottom of the RV now. It's, it's in, no one's gonna be able to climb up that. I also bought a couple more things of steel wall to pack in here so that we don't have any rodents trying to get in. So we've been in here for quite a while. I don't think I've had any rodent intrusion, which is pretty good. And if they are in here, at least they keep them quiet. So that's all I ask. While I was working on that Toyota truck right there, uh, I came across a group of batteries in the garage and I put my tester on a bunch of them and found this AGM from 2018 fully charged sitting there. I put it on a tester or on my, my charger, 10 amp, like two seconds later, it went all the way down to one amp. This battery is fully charged, just sitting on the shelf waiting to go. And it has... Hey, want to help us out? Subscribe to our channel. It's totally free and it would really bring us joy. Then click the bell notification so you know when we have a new video up. Thanks. Just got the negative disconnected. You can see I had the positive wrapped up really tight in here. Uh, last thing I wanted to do is cause any sparks. Uh, this battery did okay. I'll show you the size comparison when I get this one out. So we're gonna unwrap all of this black tape and uh, I'm gonna unbolt this real quick. I got this disconnected. This is a hot wire coming from uh, the coach that was originally running to the uh, propane gas uh, electric refrigerator. Um, so I wanted to tape that off because we don't want to blow a fuse there. Well, I'm transferring these batteries. Let's get that bolt started right there. Get that battery out of there. That's a good battery. This is 12 volt, six amp hours. So yeah, it's not like this thing didn't have enough power. It just stacked up against a bigger battery. Now this thing is a little bit wider and a little bit taller. So if I can get that into that space, I think we'll be golden. Let's put that back on the shelf and put that guy in there. First thing I notice is that this thing is reverse polarity from the other one. So on the other battery, this was the negative, and on this battery, it's the positive. So make sure you don't get that wrong when you're putting a different battery inside of anywhere. You always want to make sure you double check and triple check the polarity. Fucking batteries up backwards is bad, especially to sensitive equipment like this. Okay, so we're in here just fine. Looks like it's just going to work. Um, this is still going to probably be used right here. Just a, a little bit of spacing between these two. Oop. Just keep everything separated in here, at least until I find a, I need to find a better mount for these for sure. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten down my cables and I'm gonna wrap this up nice and tight because the last thing I want is for any of my positive stuff to be able to touch anything and short out. All right, moment of truth time. Will it run on an inverter? Well, the voltage is dropping fast. Doesn't look good. I was hoping this battery would be in better condition. It was showing 12 volts, but that doesn't mean it's a good battery. I was testing it out. Let's uh, do some electrical tests and see where we're at. So I had a blown fuse, which means that we should have much better voltage here this time. Let's see. So now we're at 13.15. 
So now we're getting charged from the coach system. Let's see what we drop. Because this battery does seem a little weak. But it still might be able to be brought back. I don't know yet. Let's see. So 13.1. So far, we're doing okay just off of this. Let's hook a fridge up to it and see what happens. Let's see if it can recharge itself doing that. I think it's doing okay right now. But the only load that's on that battery is this. Let's see what happens. Right now the fridge doesn't need any voltage, so that's nice. We are running it. Let's see how much better this guy handles the poles of this fridge. Because it might not handle it at all. <laughs> Take this positive up one more time just to be safe but i might be unplugging it depending on what this thing does when it kicks off let's find out well this didn't take long fridge is already dead <laughs> so that battery is probably just not got enough juice in it which is fine uh, okay So when I left you guys yesterday, I had to pull this battery out because the old one was kept dying on me and the one that I found yesterday was too dead to work. So um, I went down to Fleet Farm today. I went down to Fleet Farm and I ordered me one of these. It's an AGM dry cell. I had it up on its side <laughs> just now. So I, this thing is gonna be bang a -rang. it's 180 crank, uh, 180 cold cranking amps as opposed to my other one, which was only six amp hour battery, only rated for about 50 cranking amps. So we're tripling the size of the battery power in here so that this fridge can stay running. Okay, we've got all our positive connections made. Uh, I just used electrical tape so that I'm taping this off so I don't have any risk of anything shorting out here. So let's get the uh, negative connections made and uh, I'll be ready to fire up this inverter and see where we're at. Okay, new battery is installed in there. Excuse my Yoda. <laughs> uh, we're running 13.4 volts, making 115 out. And right now I'm not pulling uh, any wattage. So let's get this refrigerator in here and see what happens. I'm pulling it from the wall there. Sure, this works. Eight seventy watts drops down to eleven volts. It's exactly what I want to see. And then as it goes down to one watt, it's holding at thirteen volts. Yeah. So the last battery that I had would go down to like ten point eight, almost ten point six volts on that first push. So what that's telling me is that this battery right here is taking that shot a lot harder than that other one. So we're gonna let this run on 12 volt for a few days and we're gonna see how it does, see if our refrigerator shuts off in the, in the near future. But hopefully this battery is big enough to handle the load of this thing clicking on and off from now on. Uh, the fridge is not on right now, so it's not pulling any power. But this battery should be able to run it for a little while um, while I work on uh, the air conditioner. Um, I just wanted to show you guys, uh, it's been running really good. When um, I come out here and look at it, it's always at about 13 volts when I got the coach uh, plugged in. This thing's been charging and running and handling all the loads. Haven't had any issues. Um, I think uh, this is gonna be our permanent solution now. Boop. <laughs>